Whoa, 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 how are you guys doing? So, doing two vlogs on the same day, I guess the tell is the fact that I'm wearing the same clothes. So let's talk about the career paths in programming. This is something I mentioned in a previous vlog and something I cover in detail, spoiler, not a spoiler, shameless self-promotion, something I cover in detail in my Killer Python course. So what are career paths in programming. Career paths in programming are essentially that. What are the three main career paths that you can take as a programmer once you developed your foundation skills in programming? The career paths include getting a job, number one. Number two, becoming a freelancer. Number three, writing your own code that you sell into the marketplace. Now I've done all three. Well, Getting a job, not so much. I did it once for about three weeks where I was a hired gun on a very high profile project up here in Canada where they needed somebody to come in to take care of a certain part of the system and it was for all kinds of legal reasons. Anyway, long story short, I was brought in for about three weeks working on this high profile project and uh, it was actually one of the slackest jobs I have ever done. You see, most of my adult career has been as an entrepreneur or in some form or another. My first business had nothing to do with code, but I learned how to code in the early 90s for my business. And then uh, you take it from there. I've done a lot of freelance work. I've dealt my own apps and SaaSes and uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, let's look at the career paths. You have three career paths. You have the getting a job. You got number two, becoming a freelancer. Number three, selling your code as a product. So there are pros and cons to each. Each one has a different lifestyle. And for each of these, you have a different route that you have to take, the different steps that you have to take to get there. I go into detail in my Killer Python course where I talk about all this kind of stuff. And I think I'm gonna include a similar module in my IWD, my Interactive Web Developer course, just because people are asking for it. So when you're looking at becoming a coder or a programmer as a career, you have to first consider your career paths and you have to consider the type of work that you want to do, the specializations. And I, again, I cover this in the Python course in terms of Python specializations. There's also specializations in the web stack. So in Python specializations, I talk about becoming an AI programmer or maybe become a web stack programmer, maybe getting into data sciences, et cetera. In the web stack, specializations include front-end developer, full-stack developer, back-end developer, WordPress specialist, and there's other specializations as well. Each of these specializations will determine what specific skills you got to get into. So what do I mean by that? So if you're getting into the web stack, if you're going to do WordPress, you're going to become a WordPress developer, then, of course, you have to learn your basics, as always. You've got to learn HTML5, CSS3, a touch of JavaScript, and a pinch of PHP would be very useful as well because WordPress is created in PHP. Not 100% necessary, but it's kind of a, a useful skill to have. And then, of course, you're going to need WordPress-specific skills. That's the specialization. So you have to know how to install and set up and configure WordPress. And then you need to know things like the WordPress ecosystem, all the plugins are available, all the themes are available, etc. Understand how to deal with its vulnerabilities, how to mitigate against that, and of course theme building. And I learned how to build themes in my IWD package, by the way, I teach theme building, which is the hardest thing to learn. We make it easy with the course, but in terms of the WordPress world, it's the hardest thing. And you may be asking yourself, why would you want to become a WordPress specialist? Well, because 30, 35% of the world's Websites run on WordPress. Lots of them are small business owners. And for them to install a new theme or to install a plugin or whatever, it could be a daunting task. So if you're the freelancer or somebody who works for a firm that does this kind of service for small businesses, this is a great opportunity for you. That's one of the niches, one of the huge niches, niches, N-I-C-H-E, niche, yeah, in the coding world is the WordPress developer because it's not sexy enough for young nerdlings. They want to go do Node, which 
there's far fewer jobs, far fewer business opportunities. Meanwhile, you got this whole WordPress PHP thing, which is huge. So if you're one of the smart ones, you jump into the whole PHP WordPress world, you can make a lot of money, especially as a freelancer, because there's just so much work out there for, for you. So anyway, yeah, specializations in web development and the web space, there's specializations in Python, there's specializations in a lot of different programming languages and technologies. And then you got to also consider, as I said in the beginning of this whole thing, is the career path. So whether you want to get in as an entrepreneur, as an employee, excuse me, as an employee, as a freelancer, or you want to de deliver your own code base. Each of these things have different pros and cons, and uh, each of these career paths have different personality types that are required. If you want to go work for somebody, you like that stability, you don't want to have to go get clients, you want that guaranteed paycheck, et cetera, et cetera, then the employee track is probably best for you. But if you want to create your own work environment, you want to manufacture, create, or design your own way of working, and you want to go out there and meet people and get clients and deal with clients, that requires a different personality trait and it requires a different set of skills in terms of how you navigate that. And uh, I talk about that in many of the vlogs and some of my courses as well. Anyway, I hope that's useful to you. Uh, career paths in terms of programming is something to consider, to wrap it up here, career paths and coding is something to consider when you're getting into the game. But at the end of the day, though, you still need to understand your core. You still, still need to understand the basics of programming if you're going to do any of this. And that's why I teach that stuff. All right. Bye-bye.